YouTube, how you guys doing? Hope you guys are good. Hope you guys are living right. Welcome back to the channel. If you're around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so in today's video, we are going to be talking about um, what recently happened with Binus. Now, I'm sure you guys are already familiar with this information, but if you're not, I'm going to take you up to speed because you're subscribed to this YouTube channel. And I was supposed to upload this video a week ago, so bear in mind, this, I'm literally maybe a week, three days late right now. Yeah, I'm a period. <laughs> Alright, okay, 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 relax, chill, 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 let's chill. Alright guys, so in today's video, we are going to be talking about uh, Binus. What has been happening with Binus and um, what this basically means for for people hoarding money or cryptocurrencies on the Binance wallet on the Binance exchange. First and foremost, I always tell people one thing. Never store your full-blown potential or rather your full-blown portfolio on an exchange. It's very dangerous. I mean, you guys can obviously recall what happened with FTX. People lost millions, others billions. So much money being lost. So always understand that it's not safe to store everything you own on an exchange. Make sure you always diversify. There are always wallets. There's a lot of exchanges that are also very much trusted. So try to diversify, uh, you know, your portfolio amongst these certain exchanges. Also, learn to use a hardware wallet. I always preach about this. I talk about this every time I talk about crypto. Make sure you guys use a hardware wallet. Those are the best wallets and you're safer. You're basically safer. So now let's talk about what's been happening and what has happened to Binance. So first and foremost, Binance, um, one of the largest crypto exchanges, actually it's the largest crypto exchange on the planet right now. It was slapped with allegations from US uh, regulators basically about, I think they committed almost about 14 offenses. Uh, money laundering, just to mention a few, and so on and so forth. There was just so much uh, intel that was being exposed from Binance's perspective. So, it seems like Binance has only committed these crimes in the United States. So, with that being said, the regulators from the United States have fined Binance about, I think they are going to settle for $4.3 billion. And uh, CZ has actually accepted. He said, okay, fine, we're guilty, we're going to play the $4.3 billion. I think that's where the information is as of now. And obviously, yeah, it, it is it, it is okay. I mean, CZ is worth $60 billion. $60 billion. That is the CEO of Binance right now. CZ, he calls himself CZ. Can't really pronounce his names properly. But yeah, you guys get the point. So basically, this settled for $4.3 billion. And then he agreed to pay a fine of five, $50 million, I think. About $50 million. So uh, what does this mean? For uh, you know the U.S. Uh, clientele or customers on Binance, and what does it mean for the rest of the clientele globally? Now, obviously, the United States had uh, a hefty. I mean, the people in the United States use Binance more oftenly than most did, because as everybody understands and knows, if it comes to cryptocurrencies, these things are decentralized, and uh, the U.S. market was huge for Binance, but unfortunately. I think they are going to have to cut that market off. Yeah, they, they might have to cut that market off. So what that simply might mean for the U.S. citizens that have um, cryptocurrencies in stock is Binance might stop working in the United States. I'm not too certain if it's already stopped. I'm not too sure. Now, we've experienced this a lot of times, actually. And uh, not just once, not just twice, but multiple times with different exchanges that come and go, especially here in Africa. Usually, we're the ones that are affected if it comes to such things. I'll give you an example of Coinbase. Coinbase stopped operations here in Africa and uh, here in Zambia. I'm not too certain about other African countries, but I heard word other African countries were also affected to a point where there are certain people that could not actually withdraw the, those funds. And I'm not sure what happened with those people because on a personal level, I used to store, uh, you know, crypto on, on Coinbase. And that was my favorite platform of all time before I could not buy anymore because some time back, I could use my credit card to buy crypto using Coinbase right here in Zambia, but now I'm, I'm unable to do that. And I'm also unable to 
to just sell like send or receive i think i think i'm able to send but i'm unable to receive because after i realized the changes and i got a notification from coinbase to my email it read you know yeah something about um you know coinbase not being in my region anymore or something like that so i just said ah fuck it i'm gonna stop using this and i i went for bybit i also went for binance so i continued using those platforms but you know all in all things are a little bit crazy things are a little bit shaky but i personally feel binance might stand binance is way stronger than ftx was and uh you know the allegations being slapped on binance have already been uh you know acknowledged by cz so i don't think he's much of a troublemaker so much so that he might cause sort of destruction to his company i don't think he's going to do that but what has happened uh, so far is that he has also stepped down as the CEO of Binance. Now, guys, bear in mind, CZ is the founder. He's the founder of Binance and he has decided to step down as CEO. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very different when, you know, the CEO of the company, the founder of the company, the guy that most likely programmed or developed the first written code of the whole thing, decides to step down a lot of people get anxious because this is the only guy known to the company that knows exactly what he did and where the company was going you know so when you replace a founder with somebody else it's 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 really a big step it's really huge and there are a lot of people that will literally lose confidence in the company like all right okay since cz is not in anymore i might just stop working with binance and so on and so forth so with that being said, CZ has stepped down as CEO of Binance, and um, another person might stand in. Uh, this guy is called Richard Tung. Richard Tung, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong. And so, all in all, what does this actually mean for you know the coin, the Binance coin? Because as you guys know, the Binance coin was really popular and big. Uh, you know, in the cryptocurrency industry, on the cryptocurrency field, especially on its exchange, the Binance exchange. So what I noticed a week ago, uh, especially when uh, CZ uh, finally agreed that he's going to step down as the CEO, I saw the, the Binance coin start to fall. It started plummeting. But of course, due to the fact that there's just so much, there's just so much. And you guys need to understand. You guys need to understand that CZ hoards probably uh, the largest majority of shares in binance so he still has the power he still has the control if you ask me so the binance coin fell from about 236 to maybe 220 last week and i saw it fall really rapidly and i thought okay maybe this is the end you know something like terra luna i literally thought we're experiencing another terra luna event and hopefully i actually thought it would end up like ftx and who knows, it might, because this just started. It just happened a week ago. I'm not saying you guys should now be afraid, should now be scared or take your money out and so on and so forth. What I'm asking you people is you need to be very conscious. You need to be very, very, very conscious. Just as I said, I personally do not store all my crypto on an, on an exchange. I don't, I don't do that because I personally feel it's very, very risky to store all your money on an exchange. Very risky. So... I strongly suggest you actually don't do that. If you ha if you want to steal something, you can steal something, but just not everything on your portfolio. I strongly suggest hardware wallets, and I strongly suggest you diversify your portfolio. It's that simple. It's been yeah. said that um, Binance is going to be taken over by Mr. Richard Tang, who is very familiar about working with regulators in the United States. My perspective towards this, uh, you know, new development is that people should not, should not actually be afraid. So long as Binance is able to follow the rules in the United States, follow the rules of the regulatory authorities and so on and so forth, I think Binance will be fine and they might resume operations maybe sometime next year, if at all they're stopped this year. Because CZ's hearing is, 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 is going to be in February next year, if I'm not mistaken. But we don't know what, what might happen, whether he might get some jail time or maybe not. But what does this mean for a whole cryptocurrency industry at large? Because this time around, in as much as Binance has fallen, there's another giant that's actually being born. 
Have you guys heard of M2? Yeah. There is, um, I think this was a, an exchange that was established, I think a month ago, but just launched very recently, known as M2, based in Abu Dhabi. Uh, so, in the, in, the, in, in the UAE. So, what's happening is that a lot of people have already come to a conclusion that, you know, the M2 exchange could be the next Binance. Could this be the reason why CZ was sanctioned and, you know, brought to book or, you know, things like that? Was it because they were trying to pave way for a new exchange that might buck up BlockRock's ETF? Now, guys, if that's the case, everything is going to be crazy. Everything is going to explode. Bitcoin might hit over $100,000. Ethereum might hit over twenty thousand dollars. It's going to be a lot of money to be made in this, you know, day and time. If that's the case, that is if, because what we're looking at right now is that um, the M two exchange has a has a token known as MMX. Now MMX uh, is literally being compared to BNB, but on steroids, which is which is crazy. So I haven't done too much research upon the exchange or into the exchange, but. That is going to be my next video. So make sure you guys subscribe, hit that notification button, and let's get trading. Because right now, as you guys can see, the ETF was approved. BlockRock's ETF has been approved, and uh, it's literally bucking up Ethereum and also Bitcoin. It favors Ethereum and Bitcoin, which simply means that these two coins are going to explode in price. It's going to be crazy. And you guys understand this. Every time Bitcoin is getting value, about 50% of the other altcoins are also gaining value. You guys should also understand that. Just look at the charts. It's not rocket science. It's just common sense at this point. So when this is happening, other altcoins are gaining some serious value. So it's, some, it's, it's a really good time to buy and hold. It's also a good time to trade, especially if you know how to trade and so on and so forth. This is the time. It's going to be crazy and we're here to benefit from it. So make sure you guys follow the charts, follow the follow um follow this channel to be updated on any new information that they might have but what i am doing personally as uh, a person that trades financial instruments is i have already locked in my trades i locked in my trades for bitcoin btc usd uh btc usd i think i locked in those trades when uh bitcoin was around 24 to 24,600 something that's the time I got in, and I'm going long this time around. I'm going long. I don't think I've gone this long before, so I'm going long. I've locked in my trades, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, when Bitcoin gets over maybe fifty thousand, I have about, I have a few entries. I have a few entries, not too many, but immediately Bitcoin goes about fifty thousand. I'm gonna close one, just to just one first start. So I'm gonna close one first start, and let's just see what happens. In the future so in case you haven't locked in your trades i strongly suggest you get in now because there's still time i don't think uh you know bitcoin is ever going to see a low especially if it hits above fifty thousand dollars i highly doubt it's ever going to see a low of twenty thousand or even thirty thousand dollars so now is the time to get in it's been playing around thirty six thousand thirty eight thousand dollars as as of this video it's been playing around that, but it's still a good time to enter. And remember, it's just not Bitcoin. Try other coins as well. You can trade Ethereum. Ethereum is on the move. You know, there's word out there that Ethereum might hit over twenty thousand dollars per coin, which is massive. It's crazy right now. It's I think just a little over two thousand dollars, if I'm not mistaken. It's still very very affordable. Remember, I got into Ethereum when it was around three hundred and uh, three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, now that was a long time ago. And I never really used to understand much about the trading part of it because I'll just buy and hold. But now that I do understand, I can also buy and hold and also trade at the same time. Bro, we're about to make some money. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys enjoyed the analysis. Hope you guys uh, got some information from everything that I've spoke about today. Hopefully I can bring you more of these videos. Let me do more research on the M2 exchange. And uh, let's see what it's all about. Who knows? Maybe MMX could be the new BNB and you know because it's on steroids who knows maybe 
it might make us some, some really, really good money. But before any project, before you get into anything, obviously do your own research. That is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do my research and I'm going to bring it out on my platform here on YouTube. And I'm going to basically explain. And you guys are going to analyze. You want to partake in it. You can partake in it. You want to tell the fuck off. You can tell the fuck off. It's all good. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button so you can be alerted every time I drop a new video. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.